In a hundred years from now, what stories will they tell about our lockdown in 2020? Grace Packer and Philippa Simon set out to preserve these stories. Records show that some of Queenscliff's soldiers died in the 1919 deadly Spanish flu epidemic. However, we know very little about how this experience impacted the lives of the borough residents. Over 100 years later, a new pandemic swept through the globe and Victorians were placed under stay-at-home orders. The Queenscliff Historic Museum was determined to gather stories that portray the everyday lives of locals during the COVID-19 lockdown. sort of you wake up and you you write yourself a list like okay, let's go and then some days it's it is hard sometimes mm. it's really hard I've been really impressed by how much we as an organisation have put emphasis on you know, how we deal with pe people's mental health. So I guess it's really, it's shown me that where we were maybe 10 years ago as a, as a society yeah. um, has shifted. Thank you. Um, and I guess the final question is, what has been your biggest learning experience throughout the pandemic? And this can be in relation to your work or to the community or whatever you feel has been the biggest kind of yeah learning experience it's incredible how resilient and adaptive people people are um uh, yeah especially in a time i think where there could be so much segregation in people staying inside their own houses and being yeah. able to reach them as much i think it's fantastic that this it's been a major focus yeah um yeah we've had stories of yeah, neighbours looking out for each other and checking yeah. that when people are sleeping in too late and everything like that. Um, yeah. yeah, which I think kind of, yeah, speaks to that change in society, I guess. Yes, yeah. It isn't just individuals who have been struggling with the social effects of lockdown. As a region largely supported by tourism, businesses in the borough have faced new unprecedented challenges. To reinvent yourself. If you don't reinvent yourself, um, you one, you'll go mad, two, you'll go broke, and three, you know, no one ever will take this building on again. Retails, retail stores have certainly um, embraced sort of the e-commerce side of things. So, yeah. you know, you know, online sales and um, working with our local tourism, a regional tourism body, they've been able to help. Um, a lot of the operators adapt and set up their own sort of online shops as well. Oh, that's great. Uh, some, some like uh, cafes and that's certainly a lot of meals, home cooked meals, which they weren't doing beforehand. So ready to go meals, they've done that. Home deliveries they've added to their sort of portfolio. Um, and obviously, you know, it's pretty much all been takeaway apart from a short in probably a three or four week period when we were able to reopen even even though it was a reduced capacity yeah, um, yeah that, that takeaway side of things and and i guess that made it a little bit easier when we went into restrictions again they knew what they were in for yeah. <clears throat> but certainly the second this second wave 
uh, from businesses is hurt a lot more. And I think it's, um, I just, my, my thoughts are that it's second time people are just holding on to the money a bit more. Term, we get um, students from all over, um, I suppose Victoria, get a lot of um, uh, country schools from, you know, Horsham, um, Shepparton, um, where else do they come from? Sort of, I don't know, the other side of the bay, sort of, and then also a lot of schools come from Melbourne, you know, and Geelong. But it's, look, it has been a totally different year, um, and I think it's going to continue being different. Um, we won't have any normality for some time. Despite the challenges that the restrictions brought to the Queenscliff community, many people found joy in slowing down and reconnecting with their creative side. The younger generations of the Queenscliff community have also been creating beautiful pieces of art. 57% of the local school students surveyed have started a new craft whilst in lockdown. Together with local businesses, the children's charity Cottage by the Sea has been able to support a new sector of the community throughout the pandemic. The emergency food relief program provided support for many community members, both in the nourishing food and the conversation held as it was dropped off. 18th of March, we, we delivered our first meal. Um, and there's a, there's a few media articles and everything, but basically the chef um, was at the supermarket watching all these people clear the shelves and being a little bit crazy and watching some of the older people kind of just being left out and yeah. thought oh my god how are they gonna be catered for and with Queenscliff and Point Lonsdale in particular it's um I can't remember the exact stats but it's something like 80 percent of the population are over 80 so it's we've got a lot of people in need um he automatically thought well if we're not going to be able to have kids on board we still get food donated we've got a great kitchen we've got people that can help with that why don't we try and um, deliver some things to the, the people in need? And we had a really good stockpile of toilet paper as well um, from all our donations. So all the donations that we had, instead of them going to waste with um, Mark's idea was, let's see if we can't get them out into the community. As the borough slowly reopened after lockdown, many residents felt a renewed sense of appreciation for the natural beauty and supportive community they found themselves living in. Down here, like the impact hasn't really hit us as much down here. Like we just have a great lifestyle here. We can go walking around on the beach. We can go and get a takeaway coffee, and you know it's, it's been pretty easy actually in that that respect. Yeah. So the locals have really supported us. I mean, we've really looked after them. I'll deliver food to, you know, Point Lonsdale to Ocean Grove. People will ring up and they'll go, "Oh, are you doing deliveries tonight?" And it's like, "Oh, look." I'll, I'll run stuff to you hot at 6.30. Um, so yeah, we've, we've really looked after everyone. And by doing that, they really support you. You know, we're, we're pretty lucky where we live. Yeah. Because people have looked after each other and they're concerned and make, you know, if you needed something, not so much myself, but as I was saying before, when if someone needs help, they'll, they'll get it, whether it's from council or from the neighbour or a friend. For me, it's probably um, there. There is more help than you really think there actually is out there. And there's, if this is probably the worst part of my life in terms of community well-being, so to speak, in terms of disruption and change. But um, it, it's it's not as bad as what I envisaged it would have been. If you had told me ten years ago that um, there's going to be lockdowns and all these things happen, um, I would have pictured it to be worse than it actually is in terms of the help and support that people are willing to, to have with each other from conversations across the fence to dropping off excess food or um, making phone calls or just checking in on each other. <laughs>